Yes. Okay. That's why I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at the camera. Okay. When I click the green button, the button turns green, then you're on. She's just messing with me. You're on. Hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. She's just just, sneaking on quietly. She's toying with me and just just confusing me. Um, Let's see. Which is not hard to do, but she's confusing me. Let's see if anything. Oh, there it is. There we are. We found it. Yep. And there I am with that befuddled look on my face. Good evening, everybody. (laughs) He's looking at me, and I'm looking at you because (laughs) we're here, and Um, you're here. So I'm hoping you guys are all here anyway. So let us know. I'm clicking like and share. And then if you'll go ahead and um, I'll have to expand this so I can see comments, and I have to stop it. All right. So complicated. Anyway. (laughs) So let us know that you're here. Please log on and say hello. And And uh, let us know how the audio is. I did adjust it a little bit. It seemed low, so I turned it up. But if we're blasting you out, let me know, and I'll turn it back down. Just just let us know. (laughs) Try not to to, uh, damage your eardrums. Right. uh, (laughs) So, so, but, uh, yeah. My hair's back to curly. So, and mine's still missing. So He's, He has the same style right. every week. Every mine week. kind of changes so, around. Hey, Miss Polly and Angie. Polly, Thanks for Angie. joining us. Good Yay. to see you. So I'm taking it, Miss Polly, that, that you have a night off from the grandkid patrol. <laughs> grandkid duty. That's yes. nice. Hi, Carolyn. Carolyn's here. Hello. Miss Carolyn, you. thank you for joining us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, seeing Carolyn reminds me... Um, I'll just say it here because I haven't sent out an email, but the Long Beach Rescue Mission, Carolyn, was uh, one of our um, people that came down with us each month. Faithfully. Go go down the fourth Friday of every month, and they are going to start to let us do chapel service again soon. But the chapel's being renovated, so Uh. um, not yet. (laughs) Even though they are letting volunteers come back in other capacities, the chapel service that we would put on the fourth Friday is still on delay. Yep. That's uh-huh. the official word. Oh, Marie likes my COVID earrings. Like yeah, the these COVID are my ear. fancy. They're actually like uh, pearls. They're like <laughs> little, see if I can get it up closer. It's a toilet paper earrings. <laughs> my receptionist, like Nikki, she makes them. But the she hand beads the toilet paper. is actually tiny little pearls. You can't really see that. That she hand puts on there. So right. They're the fancy toilet paper earrings. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't want to use those in real life. Oh, Robin's here. Robin. SoCal parking lot. I need freeway system all afternoon. Coming. Oh, I get you. Oh, yeah, wow. I'm Robin, glad you made it back yeah, safe. Robin and Catherine Coleman. Hello from I Oregon. I imagine you're still up there. <laughs> so, yeah. I was talking to someone about Oregon the other day. Yeah. I forget what it was now. I'm so glad you joined <laughs> us, Robin. And, yes. And, uh, yeah. Sometimes the, <laughs> the freeway is indeed a parking lot. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. The, oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. We, we are. We try to stay off the freeway as much as possible, but we sometimes have to go on it like every day. Right. Yesterday out to Coto de Casa. And yeah, so. All around. Oh, all right. And Polly likes my earrings, too. So, They're very popular. So, <laughs> so tonight, we, we, uh, we, last week, we actually finished Chapter 25. Yay. We We're going to jump into Genesis chapter 26 26. here we go uh, got a ton of ton of really good stuff to cover so um thank you all for joining us and um i'm gonna put my seatbelt on we're gonna go fast yeah buckle up (laughs) buckle up we're gonna fly so um (laughs) not really fly uh, but we're gonna be it's gonna be intense it's so hopefully if you've been with us if you've been with us um during our study of genesis um some of the verses are gonna sound really familiar it's like haven't Deja vu. Haven't we been down this road before? Like, did and anybody read this chapter? Indeed we have. <laughs> we haven't been down this chapter no, specifically, but, but some of the things that we're going to read familiar. about is like, gosh, that sounds like an awfully familiar I scenario. Just, I've read so, this. has happened before. Yeah, somehow. yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah you know. Um, Deja vu. Yeah, those who don't learn from history are destined to repeat it. Right. So, Which know. is why it's so important to read mm-hmm. the Word. You Hi, know, Laurie. Because yeah. it is just awesome how it's the living Word of God, and there's no other book like it, you right. know. And um, even if you've read it, you know, read it through cover to cover eight times, on the ninth time, you'll see something different. God yeah. will reveal something different. And um, it's just amazing to me how it applies to what's happening in society yep. every every time we teach on it no matter what chapter we're in it's just so applicable so i think i love it it's really so, fun so here we go we're gonna jump in um tonight the focus is on isaac okay abraham has has gone to his reward 
and uh, the narrative is is continuing on with the um, um, the account of Isaac. Okay, and mm -hmm. yesterday or last Sunday, yeah, I guess it was last Sunday. I, I was we were preaching at a, 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 a one of the churches that we preach at, and I went on a little uh, soapbox about not saying Bible stories, but saying Bible accounts because they're not stories. Like you know, I'm like I'm like you know. X Men is a story. Star Trek is a story. Superman. Superman is a story. Batman is a story. This is history. So, so um, people. Oh, Lori, Lori's logging on. Hi, Lori. Hi, Lori. Says Lori. that she's gonna have surgery tomorrow. Oh, oh no. Well, let me pray for you right now, Lori. Yeah, Heavenly quick. Father, we just um, pray over our sister right now, Lori. I pray God that you would just give her a sense of calm and peace, God, and um, that you would just prepare her body for this surgery tomorrow, God, and. Um, also prepare the surgeons and the nurses and the anesthesiologists and all the people that will be part of that situation, Lord. I just pray right now that you give every single one of them a very restful night's sleep, God, that they would be awake and awakened, refreshed and renewed, God, and have full energy capacity, full mental capacity, and that Lori, Lord, would just, uh, we know that you have her in your hands, God. So we just pray the presence of your Holy Spirit to just be all over her tomorrow and that every conversation she gets to have God I know that she'll be talking about you and she'll be sharing about how much she loves you and how much you have done for her and I just pray that you'll use this opportunity to um, to draw people closer to you father because it's all about you and I know God that you will just provide her with safety and comfort and peace in Jesus name amen 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 so keep us updated Lori so here we go Chapter 20, 26, verse 1. Verse 1. Let's go to verse 1. Now, now, there was a famine in the land besides the previous famine that had occurred in the days of Abraham. So this is not that famine, new famine. So Isaac went to Gerar to Abimelech, the king of the Philistines. So uh, again, you'll recall that um, part of what spurred Abraham to go down to Egypt was a, a famine-like conditions decades have passed so there hasn't been a famine in decades but now a new famine comes upon the land <clears throat> Egypt had the luxury of the Nile River and the Nile River Delta uh, uh, running through portions of it so um, although uh, there are indeed uh, desert portions to Egypt there are uh, substantial and consistent uh, supplies of water so uh, it makes sense that in, in times of, of uh, drought or famine um, from lack of rain that people would migrate to where um, they, they knew there would be a, a, at least a better hope of consistent food supplies. So, um, so um, Isaac is, is on the move. He's on the move. And the slide is on the map. Now I know this is probably hard to see if you're watching on your phone. So I'm gonna try to change so, it to the full map slide. Right. So, so I, let us I know. I think I have audio for the full map slide. Right. So. <laughs> it looks like we have audio. Please quickly let us know if we don't. Yeah. Say so I enlarged my uh, my my mouse so that you could see it, but he is down in the uh, as you're looking at the screen, the lower left hand corner. You can see the Dead Sea. We talked extensively about about um, Sodom and Gomorrah and and those those cities uh, on the plains being just at the southern tip of the Dead Sea and now um, Isaac and and his his uh, uh, tribes and people groups are just a little bit um, uh, uh, to the what is that I guess that's the west. Yeah, but on the what were you yeah. looking at? It's like the left lower, the left left just lower above corner. the word share. That's right. the town of Gerar. And then of course Egypt will be further on down the map, so we didn't bother putting that on there. But you could see all the different lines and stuff like that. Uh, that's that's uh, eventually that's where Jacob and 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 a lot of the the coming verses or chapters are going to go. But for now, we just want to know that that they're they're down in the very southern part of the promised land. And they're anticipating going down into Egypt because of this famine. Okay. But, but, something happens. Verse 2, the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Stay in the land of which I shall tell you. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands, and I will establish the oath 
which I swore to your father Abraham. So God is saying, whoa, put on the brakes. Stop. I know things look bleak. I know things look bad. I know, I know you're concerned for your people as any good patriarch, head of the household, uh, concerned parent ought to be and is. And, uh, but then <laughs> an, even, an even more loving and more concerned parent intercedes, interjects, and says, stop. Mm -hmm. You are where I want you to be. And not only that, I will bless you. I, God is saying, I will take care of you. Right. So, so just, just pump the brakes and slow down and don't move. Don't move because I not only have, have great plans for you, I made a promise to your biological father and I do not go back on my promises. All of that is contained within what God is telling is telling um, uh, Isaac at this point in time. Right. So. I think it's interesting because when Abraham, when there was a famine, when we first, it was right after we first met Abraham or he first came into the narrative, yeah. um, you know, he, there was a famine, so he just went to Egypt. Yeah. He didn't ask God, should he go there? Right. And so that was part of the, the, the sin, the first part of the sin that happened with Abraham and his journey to Egypt. So it sounds a little bit more like Isaac was, you know, it doesn't say Isaac stopped and asked the Lord, but the Lord, the Lord either headed him off and just told him, you know, before he went <laughs> right. all the way to Egypt, or he was actually in conversation with the yeah. Lord. He was, because, you know, even when he met Rebecca, like when Rebecca came to him, Perfect. he was out in the field meditating, you know, praying, you know, so he just had this daily habit, I think. Yeah. So Isaac was maybe a little bit more in tune. And when he was out doing his daily meditations, right. the Lord said, no, I don't want you to go all the way to Egypt. Right. You know, I know your dad went to Egypt, but that's not what you're doing. It's not your job. So thanks, Marie. Um, Guzik, commentator Guzik, says that uh, he put it this way: God, as he as he is journeying south, God warned him not to go any further. Isaac was to always live in the land that God told him to live in. The son of promise, Isaac was the son of promise to Abraham was always to live, live in the land of promise. Mm. If Isaac did, God promised to be with him and to bless him. A and I love that because, yes, we're reading the narrative, the historical account of Isaac, but in that commentary that, that, that um, Pastor Guzik has had put together, there is such a grain of truth for all of us. Right. Okay. We should aspire, if you will, to live in the land that God has told us to live in. We are sons and daughters of promise. When we uh, 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 believe on the, the cleansing, saving blood of Jesus. And so we should always strive to live in that land of promise. And just like Isaac is promised, God will bless us. Now it might not seem like blessings, they're in the midst of a famine. It might not seem like a, a like a, a blessing, but God never goes back on His promises. He never fails in His promises, okay? and and we'll see that. We're going to see that, and we're going to think, I don't know, this doesn't seem like much of a promise, Lord. This is kind of this is kind of harsh. But stay with us to the end of the narrative. Okay, verse four. I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and will give your descendants all these lands, and by your descendants all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed me and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. <laughs> so, so he got this little conversation going on, and God's like, whoa, stop. Stop. I want you to stay right here. You do that. I will bless you. And then God even goes further. He doesn't have to say that. Abraham or Isaac should have just been obedient at this point. But God goes on and he, and he says, Isaac, I know you're stressing, but I, God, will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven. Now, if, if everybody's dying from a famine, that ain't going to happen. But I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and will give your descendants all these lands. Okay, And by your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And of course, we, with 21st century hindsight, know that, that, that Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming then, and 
we can take consolation in that he's coming back. He's coming back for his people. Amen. So, so um, And then God says, Because Abraham obeyed me and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Abraham did it. Abraham was blessed. You know that. You're, you're a result of that blessing. Mm -hmm. Okay, You've seen it your whole life. Okay, So God's saying, Isaac, trust me. Trust right. me. I love that. I love that. Right. I mean, it's it's generational. We're going to get to this topic about generational sin. Yeah. I mean, and scripture says that that this exists, you know, yeah. that when we sin, it affects us. It affects us and the following generations. Yeah. But it also says that God blesses us. And when we follow God and keep his commands like Abraham, God blesses us to the thousands of generations. So yeah. so it's the the only way to break that cycle. Um, we're yeah. going to get to that in a little bit and talk in more detail, but um, it's just kind of coming up here because it's just contrasting or, or telling Isaac, you know, that right. God is, his desire is to bless us and not just us, but the following generations, all generations. You know, and like you said, we're the, we're the beneficiary we're the of that. We're the beneficiary of that, um, right. Because we're all here today and being able to you know be saved in christ today because abraham did what he did absolutely so god gives abraham or isaac he gives him this reassurance right mm -hmm. and then i love this verse i love the next verse i love it <laughs> verse six one of the shortest verses in the bible <laughs> <laughs> not almost quite, not no quite. but on one of the shortest one of, yeah so isaac lived in gerar he stayed put so isaac did as he was he told stayed basically put. right God said, like awesome. Isaac, I know it looks bleak. I know conditions look bad. I know that there's a lot of suffering going on around. But I made a promise. Right. I will fulfill that promise. And so Isaac stayed put. Yeah, Isaac stayed in Gerar is how the NLT says it. So Isaac stayed put. Okay, God he told me to stay there. there. I'm going to stay there. Was, okay. So just in this one simple little verse, we see that Isaac believes on the word of God. He hears the word. He hears God, but he believes on what God said. Because um, we were kind of talking about this earlier this week, is that there's a lot of people that know scripture. They know it and they, they, can, they can repeat it and they can sound so quote unquote spiritual, but they don't stay put in God's word. They right. don't do it. They just don't. So, but here Isaac is like, God said it, I'm going to do it. So, you know, right. he stays put. He stays put, okay, because he believes God is a God of promise and God does honor what he says and God does not let his people go. And we have the same promises in, this, in, in, the, in the New Testament. Jesus literally says he'll leave the 99 to go fetch the lost one. Right. We can count on that. Yes. We can hang our hat on that. That if God said it, He's going to do it. So, um, yeah, yeah. So this this is just a beautiful and ins inspirational uh, message. And again, keep in mind, famine is occurring. Famine is happening all around them. Okay. And 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 Isaac is human. He has the same, and he's and he's in charge of a, a large, large group of people, and and uh, come on, y'all. Remember, not that long ago, how many of us were 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 running around from store to store for toilet paper? Trying to find toilet paper. Trying to find <laughs> like toilet paper, <laughs> right? There yes. was a famine of toilet there paper. There was a famine, yeah. And it was stressful, right? Now imagine it was food. Imagine water. it was food and mm -hmm. water. That's mm -hmm. what Isaac is facing. Right. Okay. So this verse, I know I, I'm hung up on this little verse, but it says so much. Right. It says so much about the kind of faith that Isaac has had. And I just pray that that's the kind of faith that, faith that we can have right. when things go south. I really do. Right. No pun intended because he was heading south. South, okay. right. But he didn't go all the way south <laughs> to Egypt. God right, right, right. told him not to. But the, the Hebrew word for lived is, like like we're saying, one other um, translation says stayed. But right. the Hebrew word can actually mean dwell, remain, sit, and abide. Yeah. So also it, Isaac is choosing to abide with the Lord. 
So yeah. we have this this wonderful act of faith, and then comes verse seven. Mm-hmm. I'm like, are you kidding me, <laughs> boy? I just want to smack the back of your head. It's like, but seriously, but let's get let's get into it. Verse seven. When the men of the place asked about his wife, he said, she is my sister. For he was afraid to say, my wife, thinking the men of the place might kill me on account of Rebecca, for she is beautiful. Deja vu. Here we go again. Deja vu. <laughs> like, have we heard this kind of, like this this narrative father before? Father like son, right? Right, right. And, and we know, Why do we, we do know that? because previous chapters told us that that uh, Rebecca was indeed, it was mentioned several times that she was a very, very beautiful woman. I don't know okay. if we know her age, but um, one of the account, the trend, uh, people I was listening to said that um, Isaac is about 80 years old at this time. I know Rebecca was maybe close to his age, but she might be like Sarah was, like 10 years younger or something. 10, you 20 know. years younger even. Yeah, 20, yeah. you know, because I don't remember. The, yeah. We didn't really, um, they didn't, the Bible didn't really say her age, you right. know, at the time right. they met and stuff. But anyway, he's about 80 at this time yeah. uh, that this, this account is happening. So, yeah, so it sounds just like his dad. I'm like, so the men, the men, in, the men of the region. So obviously these are, are, are some of the, the, the non-Jewish, for, for lack of a better name, non, non, uh, uh, family, uh, people groups that inhabited the area and they start inquiring they see her. Her beauty is, is clearly obvious. They see her and they start inquiring. And he says verbatim what his father said to the Pharaoh of Egypt. Which is so crazy because yeah. wouldn't this have been a story a, a story that like Abraham told, you know, they their history was This oral. family history, yeah. Wouldn't it have been recounted that I went to Egypt and then I lied? Maybe he just left that part out. Maybe he was so history. embarrassed or he was he, so ashamed. The, he could have maybe not told, you know, told right. that to everyone all the time because right. it seems like he would have said, I lied and then got, and then, you know, we got in trouble, you know, like right. it would have been, and God rescued us, God saved us, you know. Yeah. But it seems like they would have taught that so that Isaac and the younger, the people of his generation would have learned that lesson through the story being recounted. You would but think. But obviously not. The first thing that they think is, I'm just going to say she's my sister because right. I don't want anyone to kill me because of her. It's like, right. wow. So he has this oh wonderful uh, epiphany and, and this wonderful obedience to the promises of God. And then we don't know how much time has elapsed here. But then he he says the exact same lie that his dad said so many years ago, prior. Verse 8. It came about when he had been there for a long time that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out through a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was caressing his wife, Rebekah. And then Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, certainly she's your wife. How then did you say she is my sister? And Isaac said to him, because I said, I might die on account of her. <laughs> so, so these, wow. you know, these Philistines have kind of a higher, in some ways, they have a higher moral standard, Apparently. at least regarding wives, because this is, you know, about like a hundred years later. Right. And the Philistines react the same way. Right. Right. Um, so, so several things in here. It's quite interesting to think that, that. You know, perhaps close to a hundred years have elapsed, but the the Philistines still um, are present in the area, and they remain so for 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 generations. But they still are used by God to call out the poor behavior mm -hmm. of um, uh, of this family lineage. Yeah. Okay. This and Bad again, choice, yeah. yeah, again and again. But you know, and, and it's the go, it speaks to that we will inherit, we inherit physical genetic characteristics from right. our families, you know, from our parents. But we inherit more than that, right? You know, we inherit behavioral traits. Yeah. Um, no matter how how hard we try, you know, we right. will inherit behavioral traits. Um, so. Come on, y'all. How many times have you said, oh, no, 
I'm becoming like my dad. Or I'm, I'm becoming, becoming like my, my mom. mom. Like, oh, oh my gosh. No. We say that, right? right? Jokingly, of course. Lovingly, of course. Right. But we realize, oh, we are much closer than we thought we right. were. We said, I'll never do that. And then we're doing exactly that. So yeah. I, I got to laugh because the other day um, I took my dad to the doctor and I realized we have the exact same style of jeans on, you know. You did? Yes. Oh. And I'm like, Ooh. oh, okay. my gosh, how geeky is that? But, <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. But anyway, you were dressing alike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Father but, and son dressing alike yeah, but when yeah. the dad's 83. <laughs> right, right. Hey, bud, thanks for joining hey, us. Hey, bud. bud. So, but anyway, that's just an aside. <laughs> it's a little so, scary. Yeah, it's, it's a little it's scary. Like that. It's like, yeah, oh, exactly. no. So, yeah. again, Abimelech, that name has come up before. It is not a, a personal name. It is a title like Caesar or Khan or mm. or, or Emperor or, 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 you know, think of any of those kind of King titles. whatever, yeah. King, right. King right. So Abimelech is a title, okay, uh, that the Philistines gave to their rulers, okay, and it says he was looking out through the window. So clearly Isaac is is in close interaction with the Philistine, with the people groups that, that were inhabiting that area. Okay. And it says he was caressing his wife. Some translations say caressing. I think the King James says sporting with his it wife. It does say sporting. Yeah. So like they were playing volleyball, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> playing, 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 bo- basketball, playing basketball like right. was in our one marriage group. Right, right. <laughs> the euphemism. Right, yeah. That was oh, a like euphemism. Can... <laughs> but 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 it's kind of a play on words too because sporting can, uh, can mean jesting or joking around. And Isaac's name was laughter. Mm-hmm. Right? So, mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah. it's laughter. So... Um, so it's kind of a, a little bit of a play on words to use that verb for, for what was, but it was clearly it was lighthearted and it was, but it was obvious even to the Philistine king that this, this exceeded the, uh, familiarity and the closeness and the, um, uh, the appropriateness, uh, between siblings. Okay. This is the behavior was more appropriate for uh, what would happen be- between a, um, a husband and a wife? Okay, right. and he calls I- he calls Isaac out. <laughs> like, how did you? Like, what? Why did you say? Hey, what? I saw that. The, the, she's not your sister. She is not your sister. Why? Why did you say that? Right. And then Isaac says, "What does he say? Oh my goodness! Flip back to a couple of chat or several chapters, and he says exactly what his dad said." Um, I thought you might kill me if you knew that she was my wife. I thought you might kill me and take her, okay? Which is really foolish. Hey, Isaac, didn't God just tell you he would take care of you? Well, not just, but didn't God tell you that he would take care of you? Yes. Yes. He said he would take care of you. So what are you worried about here? I know. So so he didn't go all the way into Egypt like his, he was originally planning because he, the Lord told him not to. But I guess God didn't specifically spell out in that devotional and don't lie about Rebecca. Right, right. <laughs> so, yeah. So, okay. So verse 10, Abimelech said, what is this you have done to us? One of the people might easily have lain with your wife and you would have brought guilt upon us. Okay. Yeah, one of them. Yeah, the, they have a high standard. Yeah, one of the Philistines Philistine. may have taken her for a wife and right. actually had sexual relations or a harem, with her. And I don't know if they have just one wife or they have yeah, many so, concubines, but they might have had right. relations with her. And again, th- this is the same phrase, same same um, uh, phrasing that Pharaoh used um, with Abraham. Okay. Right. Um, and then. Uh, yeah, in fact, let's go back to Genesis 12. And oops, I got a typo there. But in Genesis 12, it reads this way. Then Pharaoh called Abraham and said, What is this you have done to me? Hmm, sounds familiar, right? Eh? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she's my sister so that I took her for myself as a wife? Now, here's your wife. Take her and go. Okay, remember that. That's in Genesis chapter 12. Okay. Um, yeah. And then so, uh, in, in, um, Genesis 20, again, Abraham lies to the, to Abimelech, the Abimelech of that era. Right. And says, 
exactly the same thing. Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? And how have I sinned against you that you have brought um, that that how have I sinned against you that you have brought on me and my kingdom a great sin? You have done to me things that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said to uh, Abraham, "What have you uh, what have you encountered that you have done this thing?" Mm -hmm. Abraham lied twice about the same thing, thinking he needed to save his own skin, forgetting that God always had him in the palm of God's hand. Okay? And then now here we go. Isaac does exactly the same thing. So Mhm. Mm Very interesting. Yeah. So the commentator Matthew Henry um he put it this way because we don't want to be too hard on on Isaac because he is indeed one of the patriarchs of 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 the Old Testament and he is indeed the 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 uh, one of the line in the, in the lineage that that uh, Jesus comes from, and but Matthew Henry said um, a couple of centuries ago now, um, so the 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 verbiage is a little archaic, but he says that that very good men have sometimes been guilty of very great faults and follies. Let those therefore that stand us, in other words, in us. Take heed, lest they fall, okay? And those that have fallen, not despair of being helped up again. So Matthew Henry is saying, uh, sometimes very godly people fall really far, okay? Therefore, learn from their mistakes, but don't despair if you should fall, get back up again mm -hmm. by the power and the help of the Holy Spirit, Get back up again. You are not ruined. You are not ruined by any stretch of the imagination if you should fall. Yeah, Robin says at least Abraham and Sarah were indeed half-brother and sister. Yeah, yeah, Rebecca and Isaac were distant relatives, okay? But you're right. They, they, they don't even have that. Yeah, at least it was a half-truth. Yeah. Abraham and Sarah, you're right. That's right. Yeah. You did make that point. It was a half-truth. and right. now, but, um, but Isaac and... Uh, Rebecca were it's like a like second cousins second or second yeah, cousins it yeah. wasn't that it was far second cousins. right yeah it wasn't that far right. removed but, but it was second cousins so. right so you're absolutely right Sarah mm -hmm. thank you oh Sarah uh, Robin <laughs> yeah. thank you thank you <laughs> Sarah Sarah Sarah's in the Bible yeah, yeah. yeah. but so. I, I think just I just wanted to mention one thing back from in verse 10 it says you know that word that sentence there one of the people might easily have lain with your wife I mean in the context there we know what that word is means lane or lay lie with you know um it means have relations with sexual relations with and um and there's other parts of the bible where people people say well uh like for homosexuality they say well it it, it doesn't really say that you know that that's wrong but there are the passages that say a man shall not lie with a man and a woman shall not lie with a woman you know and so it's that same root word right and right. um in in the context there and in the context here, it it means what it means. It means sexual relations. So, right. Um, it's just important to know that the Bible is very consistent. You know. Right. And um, when the meaning is, it, ha it has a meaning, and right. we can try to deny that and say, well, over here it doesn't actually mean the same thing. Right. <laughs> but it does. And even if you go, if you were with us way back when, we talked about how. Um, the terminology that's used in Genesis 1 is clearly understood for day mm -hmm. all throughout the Bible, but for some reason it's twisted when it, it, uh, by, by people who don't want to admit that it was six literal days. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, they, they say idea. it means a long period of time there. Yeah. So I was talking about um, um, that concept with um, a client today because she said that she had ordered an item from Amazon Prime and that it was supposed to be next day and it took 10 days to oh, get there. Yeah. And I said, well, maybe they're, they're old earth believers. And <laughs> <laughs> so for them, a day means can mean a thousand, a thousand a very years. A million years, right. millions of years. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> verse 11. Be careful. Context, context, context. So, <laughs> so verse 11. So Abimelech charged all the people saying, he who touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. So, there so you go. God again, God uses a non-believer non -believer. to enforce and 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 keep 
Isaac safe. Right. Okay. Just like he promised. Just like he promised. From the most unlikely of sources, God mm-hmm. provides um, uh, exactly what he said he was going to do. Well, and it's just a cool point to know that God is God is in control. You know, yep. even though uh, sometimes, you know, the maybe political things of the day don't don't go the way we would have wanted. I'm not saying that, you know, like Trump or Biden is like God's person, but I'm just saying God is in control no matter who's in what position, right. you know, whether who we have as president or who is the the king of whatever country or who's the president of Egypt, you know, God is in control and he can use those people in those positions for his good, for his purposes. He can do that um, because he's God, right? So, I mean, it is powerful and important for us to pray and to keep praying for the president and praying for our city officials and our county and our, you know, our state officials. It's important to pray for them because they're people. Right. You know, they're not mini gods or something. They're people. They need to be saved. We, you know, they they need Christ. So we need to pray that God would continue to use them for his purposes and but pray that if they're not saved, that God would, you know, become known to them and they would become saved. So absolutely. Because um, the Lord does hear our prayers and he does heed our prayers. Yep. Um, you know, he's not a genie. He doesn't do what we want just because we say it in a certain way. But if we pray and just ask for his will to be done, um, ultimately, he's going to keep us protected just like he protected Isaac and just like he protected, um, you know, Rebecca and Isaac, like the same way he protected Abraham and Sarah right. over and over again. So it's kind of interesting that this account, this this event, this kind of event, is this is the third time in Scripture. Yep. The Three third times. time, you know, that they chose to lie. Yet what we're going to see is that God blesses him. Anyway. We're going to see it in the next verse. I know. Yeah. So watch this. All right. <laughs> so we had this great blessing. We have Isaac really messing things, almost messing things up. Okay. Yeah, he from messed a, up. From a human perspective, <laughs> from a human perspective, God redeems that. And then watch what happens in verse 12. Now Isaac sowed in, the, in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him, and the man became rich and continued to grow richer until he became very wealthy. For he had possessions of flocks and herds and great household, so that the Philistines envied him. Now, we recall that Isaac so, had already received an inheritance from, um, from his father, Abraham. So he was already wealthy by, by standards of the day. He was already a very wealthy man, and yet... Uh, he he didn't just rest on that. He sowed. He right. sowed. He in, he invested and he reaped. He worked. He continued to work and do. Um, and God blessed him even further. It says a hundredfold. Yeah. A so hundredfold. So just one year. Right. I'm happy year. if we get two percent interest on some account or something like that. Yeah. Can you imagine getting a hundred percent interest? You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so it was obvious that. This was what an interesting point. So even though the Philistines called Isaac out on the lie, confronted him, and he had to admit that he lied, um, God is still blessing him. Right. Again. So I, I know it doesn't I, mean. So God is a forgiving and loving right. God. I mean, we're always we're gonna mess up continually, but hopefully we won't do it three times, the exact right. same sin. But whatever, you know, even if we do, this is proof, right? Right, here, right. Peter, God Peter's proof of that. Wants you know, to yeah. bless us. Right. Peter's proof of that. So, um, so, and then we have that last line, of that last sentence in there, the Philistine. So that the mm-hmm. Philistines envied him right envied him so now we have discord brewing so of course when god blesses us uh people who are not in god's will don't like it they don't like it okay and Mm -hmm. and so now envy is starting to build and envy is 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 one of the worst it's one of the worst Mm -hmm. you know because because it it not only destroys the 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 object of envy it destroys the person um, that is doing the envy it just it literally destroys you from the inside out so verse 15 now all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of abraham his father 
the Philistines stopped up by filling them with earth. So again, that part of the world, water is abs well anywhere in the world, but in that that desert region, water is absolutely essential. It's vital. It's 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 worth its weight in gold. Um, and Abraham, we know, had dug many wells throughout the region so that he could uh, take advantage of, the, of the, the vastness of the land and spread his herds out. And, and that, that's just good management. That's just good um, uh, business sense, right? But the Philistines are envious of, of the, the massive uh, increase in uh, Isaac's wealth and so what do they do? They stop up his wells. They start to stop up his wells. And this reminds me, this reminds me, it's, it's quite interesting, but it reminds me that um, for um, se several years, um, my great uncle, my grandfather's brother, um, he was a, 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 a teacher and he went to um, a Native American reservation to uh, be a teacher. And he was there for quite a while. And he really started making inroads. He was not a missionary. He was not a missionary. But he went there. But he was making a lot of progress with the, with the, the, the young people that lived on, in that uh, reservation. And so much so that they, they were starting to uh, question the, uh, the 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 medicine man. He was he was just. They always my uncle always called him the medicine man, the the village elder, the 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 elder of the region. So much so that the elder um, stopped up their their well their wells, and 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 the people had to leave where my uncle was teaching, and go other places. And it was too far. This was back in the nineteen thirties, and they and they 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 couldn't stay in that area. Because there was no fresh water, and so that 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 medicine man became envious of the progress my uncle was or my great uncle was making in that region, and so he literally stopped up their artesian well so that the people had to go. So that reminded me. This reminds me of that 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 actually happened in our family mm -hmm. history. So the Philistines are doing the same thing out of envy. They stop up the wells, and they, they, and they literally fill them up with dirt. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Guzik. Guzik puts it this way. Um, wells were difficult and expensive to dig. It was a significant attack to destroy someone's wells. This shows how severe the envy of the Philistines was toward Isaac. Okay. Moving along, verse 16. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are too powerful for us. And Isaac departed from there and camped in the valley of Gerar and settled there. Notice, Isaac doesn't put up a fight. Now, clearly, he's very wealthy. He probably has a lot of, uh, of family members and hired hands. They could, they could put up a fight, but he moves on. Mm -hmm. He moves on, and so uh, um, he goes down into Gerar. He goes into that area. Remember, he didn't go into Egypt, but he moves away from where this immediate conflict is. One of the commentators I was looking at said that Isaac is the mild, the mi the a mild man. That he was the mild son of a not so mild. He was a mild son of Abraham, who was a warrior. Like he went. Oh and right, fought, right, right, right. And right. he was the mild father of Jacob, who becomes who was like right. you know Jacob and Esau both were more. Right you know, right. willing to fight for things. And, you know, actually Jacob wrestles with God. You right, know? So, right. So um, Isaac is a very non-confrontational kind of person. Right. So I it's interesting that, that yeah. he was a different personality than his dad or his sons. Interesting, interesting, yeah. Yeah. Verse 18. Then Isaac dug again the wells of water, which had been dug in the days of his father Abraham, for the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham, and he gave them the same names which his father had given them. So this verse says that like they had stopped up the wells after Abraham died, so yeah. it wasn't like right away, right when Isaac was starting to try to go find the wells. Like they was they were already they were already stopped up. Right, but they needed those wells. Well, they, and he yeah, needed them, so yeah, he yeah. went to go go settle in a different area near right. a well where he knew his father Abraham had put a well, 
but it wasn't a useful yeah, well. Yeah, the Philistines had dug it up. To, right, to had already yeah, blocked it up. Probably in anticipation of this very likely thing happening. Of them. Well, Abraham was so successful yeah. and prosperous, and they had sent him away, so they really didn't want him to come back, is what that shows you. Like, So the fact that Isaac like showed up in their area again, they're like, oh, no, here's this guy that God always blesses. And then they watched it happen. God totally blessed him, you know. And they're like, now we're afraid of him. He's got a larger contingent of people and resources, you know, than they did. So they were trying to get him. They didn't want the they didn't want the people of God to be in that area. So he didn't confront them. He just started working. He just mm-hmm. started working to redig these wells, and and they likely they would have been marked, well marked, to, so they could be found in in a, in a hostile region. Um, in a region without GPS, <laughs> okay. Right. So, so he found him. He found him clogged. He just got to work and he started redigging those wells, and um, renaming them what his father had originally named them. And I, I love what the commentator Guzik said about this, um, this event. He says there is a powerful illustration here of spiritual life. The spiritual resources that sustained previous generations are available to us today if we will seek them with faith, work, and commitment. Mm -hmm. And this really resonates with me because we were having a discussion not too long ago with with, with some friends of ours about the power of old hymns. Mm -hmm. I know know people think, oh, that's so old and those words are so hard and they're so, and the melodies are kind of, eh, you know, but they're, but, if we actually took the time to listen to some of those old hymns, there's there is great theology in many mm-hmm. of them, not all of them, but many of them, and they can sustain us. And and over the years, we've heard so many accounts of people who were in dire straits, mm-hmm. absolute horrific situations, recalling a hymn or a passage or or or, or the life of a missionary or someone like that. Um, and, and and knowing that if that individual or that the person who wrote that song could get through the horrific situations that they were, then maybe I can do that. Maybe I can do that. But it takes work. It's not easy to understand, you know, uh, English from 300 years ago. Okay, it's not easy to understand uh, uh, phrasing that that uh, fr- like from Shakespearean times. But it's so worth it. Mm-hmm. And that's the same idea here. Um, we just read Matthew Henry. I think he was in the 1700s, right? Mm. Um, but his words were so profound. Um, and, and so we, we have much to learn from previous generations. So instead of always trying to reinvent the wheel, sometimes it's just good to look at, at, at the roads that our, our forefathers uh, uh forged um, with blood, sweat, and tears. Right. I mean, I think it's important, even with uh, contemporary Christian songs, like, um, you know, obviously style progresses and changes over over the years, but there's some, quote-unquote, older, I mean, they were originated older <laughs> years ago, songs that I always say they're, they're so old that they're new. Um, and the words are so uh, profound, and the words are basically just scripture set to music, um, so you can't get better than that. It's God's word set to music. Um, and those songs, I feel like that we are cheating um, the current and future generations. We're cheating them. We're cheating them out of that that connection with the Lord right. just because, well, we don't want to sing outdated uh, music. And we don't want to sing something that's outdated. Right. Um, and we're just cheating them because if it's God's word, set to music it's easier to remember and you know it's it's even you know it's powerful and um just because it was written 10 years ago or five years ago or 25 years ago you know it's it's um it's important that we do it that we go ahead and sing the old songs you know at the risk of seeming old what you'll experience is people who have not heard it before are just going to be touched by it yeah, they're not surprised. going to say, wow, that song's super old. They're going to say, I've never heard that song before. And wow, that's powerful. But don't take our word for it. Let's see what Scripture says about this, this concept of, 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 uh, uh, of, of digging in um, to what was done by previous generations. Mm-hmm. 
chapter or verse 19. But when Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found there a well of flowing water. So they dig up this well that their father, his father had done decades prior. And not only was there water, it was flowing water. It was running water. So it, was it, was underground a, it was an underground river, spring, spring or river. Yeah. Right. And, and seriously, if you have a choice between stagnant, stagnant well water and fresh, bubbling artesian water, go with the artesian water every yeah, time. Yeah, we all pay for it now in the bottles. Yeah, you know? right. <laughs> so uh, um, a pastor, uh, Pastor Grant, he, he put it this way. Literally, they, they, they find living water. And that's the actual term that's used for flowing water. It's living water, okay, which hints that they were spiritual people who were looking for more than, than just, just simply... Um, uh, hydration for their for their physical bodies and we ought to be by that so 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 many of us settle for stagnant well water right um, and if you've ever had sulfur water or stagnant well water it'll keep you alive it, you know it'll 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 get you going it'll, it'll get you get you through but um, and hopefully it won't go through yes. you. Sometimes but, it gives you diarrhea. Yeah, sometimes so it goes through you. It gives you illness because more organisms can grow in that water. That's why it's not as good, you know. But that's like basic, basic Boy Scout, Girl Scout 101. Mm -hmm. Always go for the fresh Hiking running water. Right? Hiking 101. Go for the fresh flowing water. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we see they put in the hard work. They didn't discount the, the wisdom of the elders. And God rewards them with fresh flowing water. We better pick up the pace. But, verse 20, the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with the herdsmen of Isaac, saying, the water is ours. So he named the well Isik, which means contention, because they contended with him. So right away... <laughs> Hey, wait Somebody's a minute. Somebody's <laughs> see you blessed. They're always going to want to steal your well. blessing. That's my well. Like you guys are the ones who filled it in with dirt. Right. You were ignoring it, right? You didn't want it. But now that it's viable and usable, let's attract it. So he names the well contention. Right. Verse 21. And then they dug another well and they quarreled over it too. So he named it Sitna, which means enmity. Enmity or conflict. Conflict, okay. yeah. So he says, the name, but... What does he do? He moves on. He He's doesn't. Like, okay, Isaac. So this right. is again. Isaac is not the contentious one. Right. He's not a quarrelsome person. He would rather just uh, avoid conflict. Verse twenty-two. He moved away from there and dug another well. They did not quarrel over it, so he named it Rehoboth, broad places. For he said, "At last, the Lord has made room for us, and we will be fruitful in the land." So he just simply moves on. And he finds a place and he just says, now we have room to stretch out. Now we have room to be who God wants us to be. Actually get a well that we can keep. <laughs> right. So, um, and then verse 23. Then he went up from there to Beersheba. The Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for the sake of my servant, Abraham. So, so, so we see in that that this was no cakewalk for for Isaac. Can you imagine having no to dig walk. three wells before you, you know, hand dug? Sometimes the wells had to go down a hundred feet or more, okay, by hand in hard rocky soil mm -hmm. uh, to get down to where they needed to be, okay. And then they they were there was much much work that went into making a well in the desert. And they do it. They just keep doing it. So all that to say, if people are stealing your blessings, mm. if it seems like you will never stop digging to get to that living water, mm -hmm. don't give up. Look at the example of um, Isaac. Right. And then he finally does it. He gets to where he can now rest. And what happens? God appears to him that same night yeah. and says, do not fear. Mm -hmm. Do not fear. And I think that word is so applicable to our situation today. Right. Do not fear. Right. What they say that there are about 365 verses in the Bible that 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 have that sentiment, do not fear, do not be afraid. Um, so I think that's a it's a sentiment that God wants us to to take to heart. You know, he wants us to learn that if we 
listen to him no matter what we're going through we should not be afraid because he is with us he is watching over us he will let us know when we're on the right path you know right so so what does um what does isaac do okay he does, he does the sensible thing for a change yes <laughs> <laughs> he didn't lie about rebecca <laughs> no so he built an altar there and called upon the name of the lord and pitched his tent there and there and there isaac's servants dug a well they dug a well. At Beersheba now. They dug a well in Beersheba. So yeah. now he's he's putting his roots down uh, as much as a nomadic lifestyle can, can do. Right. But but he God says, I'm, don't be afraid. I'm going to bless you. And God does. And so Isaac says, okay, this is where God wants me. This is where he wants me. There was a lot of contention. There was a lot of enmity. There was a lot of, 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 of I thought we were good. I thought we had found that well of living water, but that's not where God wanted us. It seemed good. We moved on, and now we're where God wants us. And what does he do? He worships the Lord. Mm -hmm. The yep. first thing he does is he builds an altar just like his father would do. Remember, there were altars Abraham built scattered all through the region because Abraham recognized God's provision was there. Right. And he digs down and he... Uh, he he um, makes an altar, and and then he secures he secures water for for his people, okay, by digging another well. So when things go your way finally, so you've been struggling and struggling to get that promotion or you know buy that house or I don't know accomplish whatever it is you want to accomplish, um, get your kitchen cleaned I don't know, but what happens? What do you do? What's your first response when? you finally get that accomplishment that you've been struggling for or get through that situation, do you just post, post on Facebook and Instagram and say, look, I did it? Or do you say, God, do you stop and worship God? Do you stop and worship the Lord? Do you stop and give him thanks first, then post on Instagram? <laughs> and when you do that or Facebook, and do, when you do that, do you give God the glory or do you just say, it happened, right. you know? Right. Just right, a thought. Right. Just a question now. Throwing it out there. Right. <laughs> so we'll, um, we have about 10 more verses to go, but we're going to just, I want to just end for tonight on uh, this, this commentary or this, this statement uh, that uh, the commentator Guzik made uh, just to kind of, just to kind of bring us back, uh, back around. He says, Isaac walked in the same paths of his father, Abraham. Literally, he, he literally traveled in the same region that his father traveled, uh, going from the same wells to the same to the same well. Uh, he followed his father in, 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 in the same path of, of lying and, and fearing and being reprimanded by a people that were not uh, necessarily a godly people. They weren't a godly people. So he did, he, he did that too. Um, but, but he also worshiped God with all his heart. Altars and tents marked Abraham's life, demonstrating a life of worship and trust. Isaac lived that, calling on the name of the Lord and enjoying the additional blessings of another well. Mm -hmm. So we know that um, Abraham finished well, no pun intended. <laughs> Abraham finished well, and now Isaac is 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 he got sidetracked but now he's back on path and he's enjoying the same blessings that his father had because god doesn't change mm -hmm. god doesn't change god does not change and um and and he and he he will see us through robin is asking in the remaining second minutes or so when does god want you to stand up for yourself You'll clearly indicate when he wants you to stand up for yourself. Mm -hmm. When injustice is happening, when, when uh, uh, his name is, is, is being dishonored, mm -hmm. those, are, those are times to stand up. But you will mm -hmm. know. You will know when you're to fight and when you're to flee. David knew it. Um, many of the, of, of the judges in the, in the Old Testament knew it. Even Jesus. There were times when he just walked away. Mm -hmm. And there were times when he, he rebuked and he right. confronted. And I don't think Isaac was sort of not standing up for himself here. He just, 
I, yeah, they were they were like quarreling with him. Right. But he also just didn't have the the word from the Lord that this is where he was supposed to stay. Right. So as <laughs> one of the old you know old common sayings is pick pick your battles. Right. And th- that happens in in life and in our Christian life. You know, God doesn't want us to go around and beat people over the head with the Bible or you know, um, you know, but He does want us to stand firm for him right and if there's injustice or you know things are being said or done that are not bringing glory to god then we are supposed to definitely not you know endorse those things or participate in those things or and maybe we're supposed to move out of that situation right or maybe we're supposed to call people out just like he had the philistines call isaac and abraham out for their lies we might be put in that role sometimes to be the one who says this isn't truth you know and You have to point it out, but God might tell you to go ahead and move away from that situation too. But the short answer, Robin, is to just trust that the Holy Spirit will, in fact, let you know. Right. That's not a cop out. It's a reality. It's a truth. Yeah. So great question. Yeah, good question. Great question. But that's why we have these great examples, and studying the Word is going to give you, you know, information about situations um, that happen in your life. You know, and if you say, "Oh, wow, I know what God told Isaac to do." So. We'll pick up the narrative uh, from verse 26 starting next week. Mm-hmm. Blessings to you all. Blessings. Have a great rest of your week. And uh, uh, just just keep digging those wells. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Good night, all. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Bye. See you next week. Bye.